So a lot of you have said that you're interested in investing in emerging market real estate. The kind of stuff we talk about here on our channel all the time. But there's one big negotiation difference that I see when I'm buying real estate in emerging countries that you wouldn't see in most developed countries. I'm going to tell you what that is and how to deal with it in this video. <laughs> Hey, I'm Andrew Henderson. A lot of you have been watching our videos on buying real estate in Istanbul, in Malaysia, in Montenegro, in Serbia, places all over the world. And if you'd like to see more videos on buying real estate, on uh, tips for buying real estate all around the world and on specific markets, leave a comment below. I want to make sure this is something that is interesting to you. But what's really been fascinating for me as someone who grew up in the United States and was used to that market and, and learned how to negotiate in that market was going overseas to countries like Georgia and Armenia um, and even Poland and, and other you know, countries that uh, either are emerging or were recently emerging and, and are now a bit more developed. There's a different way that a lot of these people negotiate and it's very simply this. For some of these people, especially older people and especially in parts of Eastern Europe, they look at it as he who has the supply wins. Whereas in the Western world, we look at it as he who has the demand wins. I have money. I'm willing to buy. I'm a cash buyer. I'm more exciting than someone who has to get a mortgage. You know, I can close quickly. That's interesting. What I found is in a lot of emerging countries, and again, it seems to be a lot of countries that were formerly communist, okay, which many of those countries do appeal to me now. But when you find people who've owned a property for their entire life, they're going to be less likely to negotiate with you on price because they have owned the property for a long time. So in the United States, for example, people sell their homes an average of every about six years. People are constantly doing deals and they've realized because they're constantly doing transactions that hiring a real estate agent, for example, is a good thing to do. You'll, you'll make your money back. The real estate agent will pay for itself. I learned that lesson when I sold my house in the United States. I used an agent who was referred to me. They did a great job, but they only charged 5% instead of 6% commission. I had a, a lesser supply of willing buyers because those buyers' agents didn't want to take a half a percent reduction on their commission. So I learned, <laughs> don't cheap out. You know, Put the full money in and you'll get it back. That concept doesn't really work in a lot of emerging economies, where as we've talked about in other videos, there really isn't a very well-developed infrastructure for selling real estate. You'll see real estate agents that aren't very good. They're not very professional. They don't do many transactions. And as a result, they're being paid very low rates because that's what the market demands. I first really noticed this about four years ago, and I was looking at real estate deals in Poland. And I, I noticed how a lot of people who were selling were not negotiable. They'd have a property for, let's say, $100,000, their negotiation was, I'll give it to you for 99, take it or leave it. What I also found was that uh, you know, these agents just aren't very good. And so th those kind of dovetail together. And what happens is these people just aren't in a rush to sell their property. It's not like in the U.S. or many other Western countries where, hey, we're moving from Kansas City to Phoenix and we got to unload this thing. And all right, fine, take a small hit, you know, lower the price, 10 grand, whatever. We got to move this thing. Let's go. You know, here in Georgia, for example, you go and look at deals. I've done lots of deals. I've helped other people do many, many more deals. And um, people are just willing to walk away. Never have I seen a market where you'll call someone with a property that's listed for sale and they'll say, you know what, I changed my mind. People change their mind all the time because it's such an emotional transaction for them. And the real difficulty in that is that their attitude is, you know what, whenever I'm ready to sell, there will be willing buyers, as if it's still communism, okay? They don't feel that they need to entertain you. They don't feel like, oh, you have money, who cares about your money? I told the story um, about going to look at an apartment uh, for sale in Malaysia. I wouldn't really call Malaysia an emerging economy, I suppose it is, but it's a pretty developed place. But what you have in, in parts of Asia is you have some Asian cultures where owning real estate to them is like money in the bank. They follow the mantra of real estate always goes up. So why would they be in a rush to sell it if it's just as good as a bank account and it's always going up? Like it'll be worth no more next year, right? I mean, why sell it even if it's empty, even if you're just paying, you know, homeowners association fees and property taxes, who cares? It'll always be worth more. So I went to look at a property with my now wife and, and 
uh, basically the guy told us, he said, I'm not going to do a deal. Like, I'm not going to negotiate because I'm not desperate. My attitude, which did not sway him, by the way, was I'm less desperate. I already have a house here, and I don't even have to live here. I can go live somewhere else. I have other homes. I can buy other homes. I can do whatever I want. Did not sway him because he figured, you know what? I have supply. Supply is what's important. Even though Kuala Lumpur has an oversupply of apartment buildings, there are some people that you just you can't deal with. Okay. So what I've found in markets like that, as well as markets in Eastern Europe, is you simply have to have a lot of options. Uh, when I bought my house in the United States, I remember I shocked the real estate agent. We went and looked at two houses. The first one was disastrous. It was in the, in the middle of the, the real estate crisis, and you know, the pool had turned green. It was drained, just like little you know puddles of green water at the bottom of the pool. The place was just not in good shape. It was a big fixer-upper. The second one was a recently flipped property. Um, or recently renovated, they were, they were doing a flip. The price was really a good price for what it was, for being in brand new condition, turnkey, basically. So in that, in that situation, volume wasn't the issue. Looked at two houses, bought one, done, loved the house. I think I literally had an online profile on the real estate website with two or three other backup houses. Maybe there were five houses on my list. We saw these two first. I said, let's buy it. And the deal was closed pretty quickly, right? So that was not difficult. What you're going to need in other countries is you're going to need more volume. If you're going to Georgia, just as an example, I often use Georgia as an example, because um, a lot of you are interested in it, you might have to call 100 real, uh, properties. Many will not take your call. Many will not return your call. People will change their mind. In a country like Malaysia, it's not going to be as difficult. In a country like Colombia and Mexico, we've been doing a lot of work on those recently. Um, it's, not going to be, it's going to be a little bit less difficult still, in my opinion. Eastern Europe does seem to be difficult, most difficult. Asia next. But you're going to need volume because even if you get into the door of 20 out of those 100 properties, for example, and they're willing to sell and you know they're not changing their mind or playing games, what you'll find is some of them, uh, will, you know, they've just made up a price. That's a big thing that I see in some of these markets where you don't have some of the intelligence you do in, in more developed markets. Now, do you need the MLS or some kind of Zillow to tell you what the price is? No, you can use basic metrics. You know, people know what properties are trading at. But individual sellers who are emotional, they lived there for 50 years and they lived there through the, you know, the Khrushchev era, you know, they just, I think it's worth this. And it's up to you to say, uh, I, I'm going to walk away or not. Because if, if you try and negotiate and say your $100,000 property is worth 72, in Eastern Europe especially, you're going to have a problem. Parts of Asia, some people will negotiate with you. But what you really need to be doing is just walking away from the deals where the person believes that he with supply can do whatever he wants. Obviously, that's not how the real world works. It's not how the free market works. The message hasn't gotten back to some of those sellers. And so you need enough supply to be able just to go there and say, okay, they're not really in the game. Let's just move on. Two houses won't make it. Five houses won't make it. You need action. And that's what makes it a bit more difficult or at least a bit different than what you're used to. You have to make sure you're aware of the different negotiating styles where you're investing. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist. I wrote this book, which you can find on Amazon, to distill a lot of the stuff we talk about in these videos and a lot of the stuff I've learned over the last decade plus traveling all around the world, teaching you about how to legally reduce your taxes, build your personal freedom, and create wealth faster. Definitely get a copy of this book if you want to learn more. Now, if you want to watch more videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you click the notifications bell so you never miss one of our new videos with more tips on how to go where you're treated best. And if you're already a six or seven figure entrepreneur and you'd like to put these strategies in place for yourself, go to nomadcapitalist.com and learn about how I can help you.